hey guys and welcome back to my channel today we will be installing a 24 kw generator with a 200 amp service rated transfer switch and i'm going to basically take you guys through exactly how you go about installing a transfer switch an automatic transfer switch along with your service so the main concept here is basically removing the main feeder wires out of that main service panel and transferring them over into this transfer switch and then your transfer switch being your main disconnect will bring wires down back into your service panel so that way when the power goes out the automatic generator senses it flips the generator on and calls power from the generator into your panel and basically it runs your whole house it's that easy so today i'm going to be installing this 200 amp generac transfer switch and i'm going to run into a few problems here and we'll talk about them but first thing we're going to do is mount the transfer switch i'm drilling my pilot hole so that way i can run um, my hammer drill through the concrete and use tap cons to secure it By the way guys, this little giant ladder has literally been nothing but saving grace for panels and transfer switch work. Something just like light, but something to get you a little bit higher than ground level. It's called the Sure Step. It's linked in my bio if you guys wanna check it out. It's awesome. But so here I am still mounting the transfer switch. I was the only one here and had to do it alone. It's not heavy, but it's just like awkward to hold. So it was kind of a pain in the ass. So then I sat down and wrote out exactly how I'm gonna do my runs. What it said there was I'm taking the main service feeder out of the panel and putting it into a junction box because it's definitely not gonna be long enough. So I'll be putting it into a junction box and then bringing new SEU cable in from the junction box into this transfer switch for my utility source connections. I'm using the Milwaukee automatic knockout set in order to knock out these holes. I'm gonna be doing two two inches on the side one of the two inches is going to be for the SEU, the main service cable, and the other connector is going to be two inch SER cable for the cable that's going from the transfer switch into the panel where the main breaker is in the panel. Then I'm also going to be making an inch and a half hole down at the bottom of the transfer switch and that's going to be the wire that is going to run to the actual generator itself. Knocking out of this is kind of hard because it's outdoor rated, so the metal is like extra tough to get through. And my Unibit was really dull, but it's the only one I had, so I just was working with it. So here I'm putting in the connectors as well as the bushings, because you guys know that it's code to have bushings on all of your connectors. It was a little blurry here because of like the angle that I was at, but I was just making sure that I had a whole area to drill through the siding into the basement. So this is what the Generac generators look like. I really like the Generac generators. They're easy to use and they're easy to install as well. And they're actually really quiet when they turn on, they're nice. So I'm just taking off the back plate of the generator and bringing all my wire over. I didn't know how much wire I was gonna need so I honestly didn't cut anything. There were no pictures taken for this job so I wasn't sure what I was going into. So I brought basically all the wire I had. I just didn't wanna cut it and have the wrong cut and have to go back. So I'm drilling two inch hole saw knockout so that way I can sink my SER in from the generator into here. I'm gonna put all of my wires into the transfer switch first. That way they have something to hold on and then I'm gonna land all my wires. It's important that you land your wires in the right order because otherwise they're gonna be tangled and the transfer switch isn't gonna close. So all transfer switches are hooked up differently but this one is set up so that way the top main breaker is the utility source connection. And then you'll see at the bottom where my left hand is, there's two sets of lugs right there, one lower and deeper into the transfer switch and one's higher up and closer to the outside. And the bottom is going to be your customer load. So it's what's going into that main service panel right there. And then the ones that are closer to you higher up, those are your generator load and that's what's going to the generator. So I'm just landing everything in here first, make sure it all places nicely and I have the correct measurements so I don't have to cut this piece of wire a million times. And then I'm gonna bring this down and then I'm gonna lift it back up 
and create kind of like a hard bend. This wasn't like the ideal situation and I definitely would have rather the wires be placed a little bit differently, but I was working with whatever I had and it's not really smart to run this any other way. So I kind of strategically figured out how I wanted to run it. And here I'm taking the SER and I'm pushing it through the connector, pre-cut it. And so that way I can start getting this customer's power on. This panel, whoever did it, did it really nice and it's kind of a newer home. So thankfully they actually separated the grounds and neutrals. They were still bonded together as the main source of the disconnect. But now the new main disconnect from the utility is actually that transfer switch. So now this is technically a sub panel and it needs to be separated neutrals from grounds. And a lot of people don't know that. And I've run into a lot of issues with other customers' homes that have generators that it's not isolated. And that's a huge issue. So I basically took out the bonding bar that was there and there was only one neutral on the ground side. So I just tailed that off and moved it over. So as I said before, the SEU was not gonna reach. So I did install a small junction box. This is only an eight by eight. I wanted to do something a little bit bigger but not only did I not have enough wire, but the location was really not ideal for me. So I worked with an eight by eight and I even used tap cons to drill it into the back of the concrete. The other problem was that whoever did this service initially didn't leave enough SEU slack. So this was all I could work with. So I ended up using side-by-side -side 250 MCM Polaris bugs. They're perfect for 4 aught, but they go up to 250 MCM. So I ended up using the side-by-sides, which means that the lugs are right next to each other instead of straight through. And that gave me a little bit more room in this box. It's also a pain in the ass to tighten up the side-by-sides because they like to move a lot. Once I'm done making this up, I'm going to strap both the SER and the SEU to that piece of plywood. That way they are secured. And I'm also going to, at that point, be able to turn on the customer's power and get everything working again. It was really hot, so they definitely wanted their AC back on. So I was trying hard to get it back on. It only took me about an hour to get their power back on. So they were only out for an hour, which is pretty good. Sometimes we have the customer's power out for a little bit longer, depending on how hard it is. So here I'm closing up the box, tightening all my connectors. So once I did this I turned the power on almost immediately it's on at this point and now I'm just strapping the service and I'm actually zip tying the low voltage wires that I had pulled off the wall because I like to make sure that the customer's stuff is neat and tidy the way that I found it this pa person's panel was really nice so I didn't want to ruin the area and this is the part where I'm moving the neutral over that was on the ground bar and that's when I also took off the bonding plate and I isolated the neutrals and the grounds so also at the bottom, you can see a little square box that wasn't there before. That's called a load shed module, and it's installed with a generator when you're using like AC or something of that nature on the person's generator. You don't want it to overload at the startup. So that load shed module is going to be installed. That way their second floor AC works when the power goes out. Okay, so now I'm taking the remainder of the SER that's coming from the generator and bringing it over towards my transfer switch. I'm gonna bolt it to the trusses above me so that way it's properly secured. And then on the outside of the house, you'll have two inch seal tight connecting into the generator side of everything. And that was terminated by my brother when he got there. I didn't actually do that part. And then, so I'm trying to put the SER cable behind the other two cables just for aesthetic purposes. You want it to look nice and tidy. So I wanna try to make it as tight and orderly as possible. Those two pieces of 14 three wire are for, for the controls coming from the generator into the transfer switch. That's what tells the generator that the power is out and forces it to start up and all that good stuff. This is the load shed module. You don't need a neutral or a ground when installing a load shed module. You just need to connect the hots. You need to have one going into the line side coming from the breaker into the load shed module and then obviously coming out of the load shed module with another 10 wire going to the load, which is gonna be at the AC unit. So this is what it looks like. 
it's kind of hard to get 10 wire up into that button so it's a little crinkled but I straightened it out towards the end and then at this point I'm just stretching the wire around and cutting it back so that way I can install it down at the bottom two lugs that are left and uh, get the generator syncing with the transfer switch. This is number two, so it's nothing crazy. It's actually really easy to move. And then I just put the 14.3 next to it up into the connectors and I tighten the lugs down. And then the most pain in the ass part is definitely getting those control wires in because they're so small and so are the little connectors that they give you. But as long as you have a Phillips small screwdriver, they work. This is what it's gonna look like on the whole thing so I happen to finish here and just close everything up make everything look nice like I said I try to make it look like I was never there <laughs> and then closing up the panel and that's it hope you guys enjoyed stay tuned for next week and it's the final